share article with you guys. This is um medical news today. I'm gonna see if I can um put the um link in the um in this right here so you can see it. But it's a research is investigated when the body starts exerting more energy to uh, keep itself cool at high temperatures. They found that the upper temperature lies in between 140 degrees and 122 degrees when the human body stops functioning optimally. So the human body, see, we're not human, okay? That's number one. We're not human, and you have brothers and sisters who live in different parts of this realm where the temperatures usually are at 104, 105 degrees. Um, just like Void Walker did that one video and said, you know, the temperature got up to 160 degrees, but the original beans um, didn't die. It was, a, it was like over 100,000 sacks that died. Okay, further studies are uh, needed to understand how this happens and offer insights as heat waves and usual warm temperatures continue to impact regions across the globe. The human body may lose the ability to get rid of excessive heat and stop functioning optimally when outside of the temperatures beyond 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, according to a research in the University of Rowe, Hampton in England, the thermalized zone is a range of temperatures in which the body doesn't have to increase its metabolic rate or exert more energy to maintain the ideal core temperature of 33, 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so 98.6, 98.7. I mean, think about it. These, the humans, their bodies are really not at 98.7. Their bodies are at a much lower temperature than we as the original beings. All right, and sometimes you can shake their hands and you can feel the feel how cool they their hands are really are, even when in there in, in hot temperatures. Studies show that the zones lower limit is 28 degrees Celsius or 82.4 degrees. Below this, the body expends more energy to maintain this ideal temperature, which this is that their temperature, 82.4 degrees. All right, our our temperature for our bodies is literally, you know, 98.7 and above. All right, because sometimes they say, oh, you're, you're having a fever. And, you know, we're like, okay, let's get the temperature down to 98.7. All right, but our bodies maintain different temperatures, but it's sometimes it's within 100 in a degree range, these humans, which are Saxons and Orientals, their body temperatures they usually lower. The usually regular temperature is eighty-two point four degrees. One of the key ways is uh, it is it does shivering when the muscle groups involuntarily contract or produce heat. At higher temperature, the body uses other mechanisms to cool down, such as sweating, uh, which is. Um, the vasodilation of blood vessels in the skin serves to increase heat loss. Okay, um, as you notice, we as the original beings, we really don't sweat anymore. Especially at high temperatures, we don't sweat anymore. However, while the thermal neutral zones lower range has been established as upper limit, still in certain. One study suggests that the upper limit um, may stand around um, 32 degrees Celsius or 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is still within the 82 degree range. As this is when humans start to sweat, another study, um, however, noted that the met metabolic rate starts to increase at 40 degrees Celsius, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Further studying the upper limit of the thermal neutral zone could inform policies on working conditions, sport medication, and international travel. As a follow-up of a 21, 2021 investigation, researchers conducted a second set of experiments to investigate the upper limit of the thermal neutral zone. They found that the thermal neutral zone upper limit lies between 104 degrees Celsius, I mean 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees Celsius, and 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The findings appear to shed more precise light upon the body's response to sustain heat and humidity upon both nature the nature and the mechanisms of, uh, of enhanced metabolic rates also uh, arise in response such in, to such conditions uh, Dr. J. West Ohm um, a bioformatic science resource analyst and biomedical data specialist at the National Institutes of Health not involved in the study told Medical News Today. Okay, so researchers um, presented the new findings in the annual conference Society for Experimental Bio Biology in Edinburgh, Scotland. Okay, for the study, researchers recruited 13 healthy volunteers between the age of 23 and 58 years old. Seven of, seven of the participants were female. Um, why are they using number 13? <laughs> um, each participant was exposed to five temperature conditions for an hour while resting. Um, the conditions included... Uh, 28 degrees Celsius, 82.4 Fahrenheit, and 50% relative air humidity, 140 degrees Celsius, um, at 25% relative air humidity, uh, was 100 foot, that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit, at 25% uh, relative air humidity, 104 degrees, and 50% relative air humidity. Air humidity. 122 at 25% um, relative air humidity and 120 degrees at 50% relative air humidity. Throughout each condition, the baseline of the researchers, researchers recorded several metrics, including core and skin temperatures, blood temperatures, sweating rate, heart rate, breathing rate, um, the volume of air inhaled and exhaled per minute, movement levels, Ultimately, the researchers found that the participants of the metabolic rate increased by 35% when exposed to 104 degrees Celsius, I mean 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 4 degrees Celsius, and 25% uh, relative air humidity. Um, uh, and and 40% at 104 degrees with 50% relative air humidity. Um, although 50% and 25% relative air humidity condition did not increase metabolic rate compared to uh, 140 degrees at 25% relative air humidity, metabolic rate was 50% higher than the baseline in the uh, 122 degrees and 50% relative air humidity. The increased metabolic rate um, at 40% relative air humidity, I mean 40% Celsius, which is 100, 104 degrees Fahrenheit uh, condition was not accompanied at the increased core temperature. However, participants in the, um, 50, in the 122 degrees, 50% um, relative air humidity, Air humidity conditions spirit a rising experience a rising core temperature of one degree Celsius or one point eight degrees Fahrenheit. The researchers noted that these findings suggested the body is able to dissipate heat at one hundred four degrees Fahrenheit, but not at um 122 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, dissipate mean the scatter. So the body is able to dissipate heat, which, in other words, say the body is able, their body will spontaneously combust. All right. Because when we talk about dissipate, dissipate means to scatter, to, um, yeah, to scatter, to like to explode. That's what dissipate means. All right, so when something dissipates, it explodes, you know, or like, um, yeah, that's what it means. Scatters, so basically, their bodies would 
spontaneously combust at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but not at 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which means they're at 20, 122 degrees Fahrenheit. What happens? They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to. They, I read this thing, and they don't want to talk about what happens to their bodies at 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which more than likely means that their body literally would just fuse, just you know, just shut down. Everything would literally just fry. It wouldn't, you know, it'd be completely different than 104 degrees. 104 degrees, their core temperature gets too hot and they dissipate. That's what it said. It said it dissipates the heat. You know, to, the body is able to dissipate heat or explode, spontaneous combust. But 122 degrees, it's like their bodies would just fuse, just. They would literally just die because their organs would just stop feeling. Everything would just shut down and they would just die. They wouldn't dissipate. They would just die. They basically, is, that's too hot for a human body. Okay. In the study, there was some evidence uh, that resting metallic metabolic rate was higher at higher humidities even at the same temperature it seems uh, like humidity also plays a large role in the metabolic rate the researchers further noted that 50 degrees celsius which is 122 degrees fahrenheit at 50 percent relative air humidity conditions sweating 74 percent more and experience a 64% increase in heart rate compared to um, baseline, 64% increase in heart rate. That means their body's shutting down. Basically, they can going to have a heart attack. I mean, it's that's what they said. They don't want to say it. Further noted that compare baseline participants at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 50%. Um, Celsius have fifty percent re uh, relative air humidity. The group experienced increased myocardial workload, meaning their hearts required more oxygen to maintain optimal function. Moreover, their breathing rate increased by twenty three percent. Um, the amount of air they could inhale and exhale per minute increased by 78%. The researchers noticed that drinking water in each conditions did not cool the body. All right. So we're looking they did they actually did a study on their own people. They picked 13 of their people, seven females and six males to do the study. All right. People living in warm climates tend to actually uh, at, at, let acclimate acclimatize acclimatize i got it um and not increase their body temperature in turn their metabolic rate is much likewise people living in cold freezing temperatures may get more of a response to heat exposure as they are not acclimatized to the heat as much which means their body works better in the colder climate than their body works in the, in the, in the hotter climate okay um the body in general will find ways to activate various feedback loops needed to achieve homeostasis, that is, the painstaking regulation of the physiological processes that allow the complex biochemistry of the organs and tissues to be carried out efficiently and properly. All right, so basically, their body shut down at 122 degrees. Fahrenheit, their body literally shut down at 140 degrees Fahrenheit at a constant at a constant 140 degrees Fahrenheit. What happens is say their bodies the the body would dissipate heat or some spontaneously combust. Body temperatures and metabolic rate are integral components of of this delicate dance, and for those who are uh, resident in hotter climates year round, it may be more likely for such countervailing feedback loops to be active and functioning. This may be uh, attrib attributable both to heritable uh, factors for communities uh, present in such conditions. Uh, longer term and to short term adapt adaptations more generally is similar 
um, to the way a permanent residence of a higher altitude regions with uh, will acclimate with uh, comp compensatory mechanisms, for example, the rare blood cell physiology and other aspects of oxygen carrier capacity, both uh, both accurately, acutely. I'm sorry, both acutely as the uh, iron turnover rates and chronic and chronically, he said, they don't want to go too much. They don't want to go too far into this, you know. Um, so this is, I'm, I'm going to post this right here. Um, I want to put the information in the, I'm going to put this information in the, um, the information box and you can read more into this right here. You can look up some words, do some studying. Um, and you see what's going on. There are no pictures in here. It's just a bunch of reading. So I'll let you guys know for those of you who want to see pictures, there are no pictures. You just got some of our our folk who want to see pictures. There are no pictures. So you basically you have to use your mind. You have to use your imagination. Kind of like figure out what the fuck is going on. Okay. Uh, Dr. Guido noted it's hard to draw real conclusions from a small laboratory, but my own. I'm sorry, but my main takeaway is that higher heat stress does seem to increase the resting metabolic rate by increasing how the body, uh, how hard the body has to work to stay cool, particularly by causing a significant increase in the heart rate. If this holds true in real world conditions, it very well could lead to an uptick in cardiovascular disease by putting more strain on the heart, he noted. So the, basically the humans cannot um, exist on this planet or this realm without their system, without their um, leaders using different factors to try to cool the air. Okay. As original beings, we need this heat in order for us to operate at optimal levels. All right, we need this. This is something that is necessary for our body. This is something that we are part of. All right, so um, I'm going to put the information, uh, this this website in the information box, and you guys can look it up and uh, study it. Um, like I said, you can look up words, do some defining, some definition or whatever, but they let you know that they can't exist in higher temperatures and even though they say oh yeah it's 92 degrees like you know my mom said the other day it got up to 102 down in South Carolina and that's too hot for these Saxons alright that's why they have the air condition going haywire they in the house when, when it's daytime it's 102 you won't see them out on the street very few of them you'll see out on the street but they tell most of their people to stay in because they get heat strokes heat strokes are uh a stroke is a brain attack. So what happens? The heat attacks their brain. You got to remember, we have a body, and inside of our, of our body is, is is like it's hollow inside of our body. But we, as the original beings, we have a completely different physiological, um, biochemical um, mechanisms within our body than what humans have. Okay, so as the original beings, we're completely different, which means our body needs this heat. Our body works better when it's hot than when it's cold. In colder climates, these Saxons work better in colder climates than in the hotter climates. But uh, we would never dissipate our bodies. The heat would never dissipate from our bodies. When they say the heat dissipates, that means it's spontaneously combust. That means the heat finds a way to get out and they explode. All right. 122 degrees Fahrenheit, their bodies literally just shut down and everything just fuses and they and, and the organs stop working, everything just stop working, everything. It's like they become um, mannequins, their body turned plastic. They had 13 volunteers and I guess only a few came out alive while the rest, well, they were volunteers. That's how it goes. All right. Catch you guys later.